according to Florida law, because this is a public place, doors have to be kept open so the public can enter and enter. That's why we make this close. Do we make instructions? Or not. Our first table will have us contested. Seek in now. But even if 
also have to time yourself and make sure you don't allow your reaction to overtake that 60 minutes that you would have in bathing. <clears throat> then I would make my plan. What is it that is necessary for me, my loved ones, or whoever else is going with me to survive and make it past the next hour that we're out of town? And then finally, I would go and execute my plan. Whatever it was that I was bringing, whatever it was I was taking, I would make sure those things got affected and I was on my way by that probably 50th minute of that one hour. What I would take personally myself was my loved ones. If I had that, I know I can survive and I can make it through anything, any of anywhere else in the world, as long as I had my loved ones and my close family with me. So remember if you have one hour or less to get yourself clean, allow yourself to to get to allow yourself to get out of town. Allow yourself to react, make the plan, and execute. Thank you. For a minute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for that long minute. <laughs> Our next table comments contestant, Jorge Freeman. <laughs> you just found out you have one hour to leave town. What do you do? You just found out you have one hour to leave town. What do you do? Jorge Freeman. If I had one hour to leave town, that means one of two things that happened. Either I did something really, really, really wrong, and I'm about to go on the run for, or we're facing some sort of apocalyptic type of situation that I had nothing to do with that are causing. In either of those instances, I'd probably gather the same things that I would need if I'm preparing for either an apocalypse or to go on the land for an unforeseen period of time, depending on the severity. I would need some sort of non-perishables that I would need. Luckily, we live in Florida, so we have a lot of this stuff already, or we should have a lot of these things already in our pantry, right, for hurricanes and, and things like that. We should be ready to go all the time with, with our go bags. Uh, but we should have non-perishables, which I will grab. Any kind of emergency cash, it's always good to have emergency cash seen around the house. Of any kinds of denominations, uh, if cash is still even working in this kind of scenario. And probably electricity is not working, so if you have cash and you don't have to go to an ATM, you're probably in a much better situation than other people are. And most likely, also in this situation, if you happen to have them, get your guns because <laughs> you're probably going to need them for either protection in an apocalyptic type of situation or to protect yourself if you are running on the lamb. And in some of these situations and you see Walking Dead or any of these things. Ammunition and firearms become very, very valuable means of commodity and trade in a kind of situation where you would have to go on the land. I don't know if it's I, Those are the things that I would prepare at last minute.
That's why we're ready. Did you give us a speaking order? The speaking order, yes, is Jorge Friegel will speak first, and then Gary Woolridge. Can I please have one minute on the clock? Or qualify under the, the health care exchange that was created under the World 
Care Act or don't qualify for any kind of Medicaid program as well. 30 million people that are stuck in this gap that hasn't been addressed. So what's the answer? I have no idea what the answer is. I'm, I'm not a politician or, or, a, or a healthcare industry expert, but going back to prices, I think that whatever part of the solution that comes out of this, it needs to give the power back to the people through free markets, through the choices, through individuals being able to choose what they consume at what prices and be able to value shop and compare. The free markets and capitalism have raised healthcare standards for the whole world, literacy standards, quality of life standards, anything you can imagine has been increased for the entire world using basic free market principles. And in some way, we can apply these same kinds of transparency and consumer choice aspects to the healthcare market, I think it will drastically increase the quality of care that we receive. Doctors, I think, are, are partly to blame for this. Sometimes we like to think that doctors are really, really smart people. Okay. They're, they're all right. <laughs> they're not incredibly brilliant. They're, they're average intelligence. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not impressed. <laughs> but one of the things that in their eight years of schooling you think they would have learned was how to run a business or how to run a practice. It's pretty easy when you price something. You take your cost of your inputs, your supplies, your time, whatever it may be, you have some overhead costs, you add a little bit of profit margin in there, and you come up with a price that's to be charged. Slap it, slap it on a bank. If someone wants to open up an office, they'll walk away from you and do it for 25% less, and they can do it and make a profit off you. Guess what? Everyone's going to go to that doctor, and unless you are just an amazing physician, surgeon, whatever it may be, to be able to justify the increase in price, people are going to go to what they think they can just get at the same quality. And we all know what's wrong with this most of the time anyways when we go to the doctor. You just kind of need them to validate it for us. Even when you get a blood test request, they tell you acceptable ranges. Oh, I, I know that everything's in an acceptable range. I know when something's not an acceptable range, and I have this thing called the internet that I can go into all this research on. If I don't, most of the time, if you have strep throat or cold, an allergy, whatever, you go to the doctor, you're just, they're just telling you what you already know and they've been able to charge you a copay in your insurance company. Who knows what? Because we don't know what anything costs, and they won't tell you. I know just more recently, just a real world example, I went to the hospital with my wife. She had to get two IVs of fluid for being dehydrated. We got the hospital bill was $3,000. There's a service out there that I know, because I looked it up in New York, that will go, people that party too hard can get, and I haven't used it. I just I read about it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll put a bag of saline in you for $300. $3,000 to $300. You decide on, on, there's room in there to make some drastic improvements. You'll be open up that market and make it more free trade and more capitalistic, giving consumers more choices. Wired, we think of kids, 
She's wired today. Or he's wired today. But when you're wired to win, how many of you have ever gone through or faced a tough situation in your life? And you just weren't sure what to do, how to do it, where to go, who to talk to. All you knew is that there was death, there was a serious illness, or something that could take me in one direction or the other. But I declare to you today that you and you and you and yes, all of you are wired to win. Mr. Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. Yes, you are wired to win. I've been in several situations where it meant coming out fighting or laying down to die. But I chose. To win. I chose to gain the victory. Take Lynn Hamilton. Moms who have sons in prison. She did all she could to raise her son as a single mom. Then her son ends up doing something that takes him to prison for eight and a half years. And many of you might say, well, he did the crime, let him do the time still does not negate the pain, the embarrassment, the confusion, the depression that one would go through for having your son sent to prison for eight years. But Lynn Hamilton decided that she was wired to win. She took the pain of that situation and created mothers of sons in prison. That organization has helped hundreds of mothers and parents and families to deal with the fact that you have a loved one in prison. And then take Adam Walsh and John Walsh. Adam Walsh is the little six-year-old who was abducted. His dad, the depression, the pain, the confusion of his son who was beheaded. He took that bad situation and made it good for thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Because he created an organization for missing and exploited children that has helped to find little ones who were out there searching because they were abducted. His organization helped to find them because he decided instead of falling up in a corner in a field position, I will get out here and help others because I am wired to win. Or take Candace like me. Mothers against drunk drivers. When her 13-year-old child was killed in an accident, she decided instead of moaning and grieving for the rest of my life, I will do things that will cause me to help others to win because I am wired to win. And I declare today that no matter what you're going through, you have something on the inside of you that allows you to take a bad situation and make it good because you are wired to win. Being raised by a single mother myself, I chose to walk out of poverty, to walk out of opportunities or situations where I could have been the person wanting everybody to give to me. But no, not me. Because I am white to win. So what do I do? Today, I help others who are in poverty to walk out of that situation and become productive citizens and to enjoy this life because I am wired to win. So when you're faced with a situation, an illness, the death of a loved one, something that you actually have 
no control over. Life is choice driven. You must take those lemons and decide to make lemonade. Lemonade tastes much better than lemons. You can make a difference because you and you and you, you're wired to win. You're wired to win. Take what's bad and make it good. Because you're wired, you're wired to win. Yes, the information is on the back of the report.